It's the story of a young junior middleweight professional boxer, 25-year-old Godfrey Niakana, and his title quest. What's this thing outside? Five minutes, five minutes backstage, five minutes till the beginning of tonight's show. Five minutes. My next, buddy, my next is it. I take charge, yeah? My name is Ingram Jones, and again we have another interview. Very special. I have uh, an American actress. Uh, but not just an American think? actress, but now uh, 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 someone who's going to be involved in a, a, a big movie. Her name is Galen Ross. And I'll let her introduce herself to you. Hello, Galen. How are you? Oh, thank you. Thank you I'm so good. I'm good. I'm on the other side of the pond, as they say. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on Bayloric TV. So, just give us a little overview as to who Galen is. Well, Galen was acting, but we're talking about quite a long time ago. So, so since then, um, I did a couple of films that some people may have remembered from George Romero days, and I know that there were fans of George Romero in 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 England, um, but. Since then, I've been directing, and one of the things that I did that never got finished was this film about this this boxing film called Title Shot, uh, following a young junior middleweight boxer, um, hopefully to get his title, but we didn't know, so we were just there for the ride. Um, we this was the story of a, a Ugandan fighter, professional fighter named Godfrey Niakana. He didn't get his title, um, and yet we filmed four fights where he won, he lost, he won, he lost, and the story of that journey is so compelling and so fascinating that it, did, it doesn't matter anymore that what happened to Godfrey, the, the, as I always think, it's it's never the ending that's important. It's it's how people get there. And in Godfrey's case, it was an amazing story with incredible access to really inside this boxing world. Okay, so how did you connect with Godfrey in the first place? I finished doing a documentary on diamond dealers in New York and the jewelry business, and it was a, a, a crazy community of, of, of people and, and um, characters characters and you know you look at them, these gems and after a while you know they become less interesting than the people and I was oh, I felt the same way when I walked in I was introduced to Gleason's gym in, in Brooklyn which was right down the street from me and I walked into this 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 gym and it was filled with these incredible characters of trainers like uh, who was former fighter Irish Bobby Cassidy, who who trained Godfrey or Bob Jackson or Hector Rocco, and the fighters who were there. And Godfrey's story was very interesting to to me. He was a fighter who had came with a considerable um, record. He had been at the Olympics or the the, the international fight, uh, the uh, amateur fights. In, in Europe, had fought professionally in Europe, now had come to America and uh, both to to become uh, a known and, and, you know, finally get the money as a fighter, but also, you know, it fulfilled his American dream to be here in this country. So, and he is a very, very articulate guy, spoke like three or four languages, and um, wrote, wrote poetry. He was a terrific, terrific person. So we decided to follow him and his story, but we had no idea what was going to happen and one of the things that is very important in title shot is that we were not um, promoting a fighter we were not doing a film that would advance a, a pre-fight um, media uh, uh, you know to, to make somebody grander than he was or is 
we were just following a fighter and it could be any fighter and the thing about the title shot is the access we had this amazing access no there was no censorship there was no way of shaping the character or the fighter we were filming we were filming in real film it was 16 millimeter film it wasn't video so you have that incredible look of film which is gorgeous for boxing but also Film allows you a fluidity. You you are able to move and be sort of invisible, that fly on the wall thing, that video doesn't often allow you to do or didn't used to do when we were filming in the 90s. So we were filming scenes and interaction with boxers and trainers and managers that I don't think um, anyone really who is not on the inside of, of, of somebody's camp is ever really privy to see. And, and this is what makes it so unique and so, so every man in that sense that it's every fighter's story um, and the passion and the heart that comes with it so, and without all of the, the, the hype, without the promo. And, and one thing that I had to say was that being in the gym, being with the trainers and the boxers is that, you know, the passion and, and the soul of these people are, are amazing and just amazing. If you let it come through, if you let it come through without trying to finesse it, without trying to push it and shape it into something else. And they're so real. I mean, we have, you know, great scenes. And also because it's been in the vault for 20 years, you know, people who were in that um, uh, film are, have their whole careers have come and gone or it's and coming back again I mean Shane Mosley was a young fighter sparring with Godfrey at the time with his father as the trainer manager and his career has been phenomenal and now he's coming back again so to see this kind of thing is really incredible Wow and um, there's lots of things you've talked about there one of the things that I, I definitely want to touch on is this thing about fabricating or, or making something that isn't good into a great something that certainly in this generation is happening a lot of manufactured fighters fighters are not very good fighters but because their managers are making them avoid certain fights and making them fight not very good fights it makes them look very good this movie i i can only get the, the impression is that it's a very real movie a very real look at things and there's nothing covered up there's no sort of pretenses it's real sawdusty yeah it's really you know i mean it, it is, i don't even know if it's a, the thing of you know a bad father being made to look really good it's it's the the manipulation of any image you know i mean it could be a very good fighter but we don't get to really see what's underneath all of it we don't get that close anymore because we feel like everything is um, manipulated in some way, yeah. Just to just to keep that distance, so so that the image is what's retained. Because I understand that there's a lot of money, there's a lot of investment in a fighter. Networks have uh, have a huge backing in them. So so it's very important how things are placed and and positioned. I think though, with 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 somebody like Godfrey, um, and the some of it was just sheerly heartbreaking just I, I could barely watch it it was so painful and this is the kind of thing for instance Godfrey had this very very important fight for himself at Los Angeles in the, in the forum in the Great Western Forum and it was a televised and it was going to make a huge leap in the placement for Godfrey in the rankings and for his next fight which would have been a title fight and this was the second fight that we were able to film, and we followed Godfrey there. This is where Shane was sparring with him. I mean, wonderful stories with Godfrey. And he gets knocked out in the second round. I mean, knocked out. It was shocking. It was horrible. You know, I remember, you know, the trainer having to call home talking to his son. This happened, Bobby Cassidy on the phone. I never forget that. Godfrey alone in the dressing room and then a, a nighttime scene that we filmed in a hotel lobby with the trainer and the manager talking about Godfrey's future and not just in the business way. I mean, Bobby Cassidy was really 
really reflecting on what it was to be inside that that mind and that soul when you lose and are defeated in that way. And Bobby remembered it because he was a fighter. He was on the undercard of an Ali, Ali fight at the Garden. I mean, he really had advanced up those rungs, but never really had become a huge uh, name. And so for, for, for Bobby Cassidy, he, he knew what it was. And, and he was trying to articulate that. And the, the manager is trying to figure out what to do now and where would Godfrey be psychologically and what's inside his head. And I remember, you know, Cassidy saying something very important. He said, you know, sometimes a fighter just doesn't want to fight that night. And it really was, it, it kept going back to Cassidy. Was that where Godfrey was? And, and would that happen to him in the future? And then there were scenes following where Godfrey, you know, weeks later, he wouldn't even face his trainer where he has to talk about this. So I don't, I don't think that kind of thing is seen very much. I may be wrong, but I don't, I don't think so. Is that, it's not a sort of Rocky story, is it? Or is it, would you say it's, it's, it's different to Rocky? <laughs> Without <laughs> Rocky 205, I don't know, what is he on now? Right, <laughs> <laughs> geriatric Rocky, oops, sorry, Sly. But, um, yeah, no, I think the Rocky, the Rocky story presupposes that you're going to watch this whole saga and then the guy is going to win. Right. Because that's got to be the ending. It has to be the ending because it's Hollywood and that's the expectation. In real life, that doesn't happen. So I was speaking with um, the sports writer, I, you know, Jerry Eisenberg, who is the great boxing writer. And I didn't know what to do with this film. And he, I said, well, you know, Godfrey lost. He says, who cares? Who cares? That's not the point. He's, I think he said, well, you know, is it the funeral of a dream? Is it losing the brass ring? He says, who cares if he loses? The point is this, this, that it's every person's effort and, 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 and whether it's boxing or something else, but the striving to do something. So if, you know, at the end, you know, 20 years have passed. We could look at where are the fighters who have won? <laughs> you know, where are the fighters who have lost? I mean, every fighter eventually ages out of, of that ring. And what happens to them, whether they win or they lose. And um, it's, it's, you know, to be on that, to watch somebody go through that, I think is what Eisenberg was trying to say. So you talked about Shay Mosley being connected to the movie. Who else is connected to this movie as well? Well, Shane isn't, I mean, he's in the film. Yes. You know, he was in the film for, for a couple of scenes where he's sparring with, with Godfrey in yes. Los Angeles. And, you know, so, so what happens is that this journey of Godfrey, the characters drop in and it's, and it's, some of them are well known, some of them are not. There was a, a really interesting Detroit heavyweight fighter, Sino, I can't remember his exact name. Um, and there was a great scene where they're both in Los Angeles going for a haircut in South Central LA. You have Godfrey from Uganda, Sino from urban Detroit. And, and Godfrey's trying to mentor him. It's it's wonderful and trying to find this middle ground of, of where these both these fighters have, have a you know a common language, which is the ring, obviously. Um, but their lives are so different. And then you have people like Kevin Kelly, who was mentoring Godfrey at the time, and um, Kevin and his then wife. There's a great scene where they're giving. They're giving Godfrey not only boxing advice, but I think his wife was throwing in a few mattress advices too about what to do, whether or not you should sleep with somebody the night before. Anyway, she was great. And, and they were both actually watching out for Godfrey because they worried about him. Right. They knew what the other side was like. They knew what he would have to endure. And, and he was living, Godfrey was living at the time, you know, with two other roommates, Ugandan fighters living in a, in a base an apartment in the Bronx, traveling three hours every day down to Brooklyn to Gleason's gym. I mean, I never saw anybody work that hard. Um, 
So, and then other people, great characters like Cutten and Al Gavin was, was in, the, in the film. And um, as I said, Bob Jackson, Bobby Cassidy, Angela Dundee were backstage with him for a while. So the, these people sort of come in and out. So it's, it's filled with this, um, uh, you know, great cast of characters as we're going on this ride with Godfrey. Absolutely. Wow. It's, it sounds like a very interesting movie. I know there was some reference to Tom Loeffler in, in the movie as well, in the film as well. Well, Tom was, Tom was the manager of Godfrey. He had, I think his company at the time was Mouthpiece. I think he had Shane then. Um, I'm not quite sure who the other fighters were. He had quite a few. I think he had quite a few fighters at the time. But it was really, really a big deal uh, to be to be handled by Tom. And it was a huge thing because, you know, losing, especially the, the Los Angeles fight, was not just losing a fight for Godfrey, but it could have been the end of the career and also leaving America. So the fact that Tom and, and the trainer, Bobby Cassidy, decided to stick with Godfrey was a very, very big decision and uh, really was, um, an, you know, how, how much they respected him and wanted him to, to continue as a fighter. So it was no small thing. Was this fight a the fight for Godfrey? Was this a fight that he was sure to win, or was it a 50-50 fight, or was he the underdog? I think I'm not sure. I mean, the Los Angeles fight, the one that he the lost, one, got knocked out. Yeah, he got knocked out. No, I think it was totally unexpected, and wow. and um, he, he he he. I think you know, there's a wonderful uh, rehash of of what went wrong. I mean, Bobby Cassidy, uh, uh, you know, at midnight in the hotel had had. Was, was just filled with, you know, all the possibilities of what went wrong. And I think he said, you know, that Godfrey just tightened up and didn't listen to him. He didn't listen to him. And, I, and, and as a trainer, he was in many ways enraged because it was, he had dropped his hand. You know, I mean, it, was as, it was as direct as that. He didn't listen to him. And I think they really thought that they knew it was going to be a tough fight, but they thought that Godfrey was going to, to win. Um, certainly not get knocked out. So that was a big deal. That was really a big deal that he got knocked out. And that they kept going with him. That was, that was another huge decision that was made. So tell us more about what your plans are for this particular film. Well, what's happened is that the film, because it was very, very expensive to finish, during that time because it was real film where you really had to like take all this literally in your hands and cut it and I mean it's a process that I went through years ago and I will never never want to do it again but it was very very expensive to, to do that then so we put it in the vault in, safely away all thousands and thousands of feet of film negative and never saw most of it just we, we, we developed it but it sat there because we couldn't, we didn't have the money to, to do the processing to finish working it. It was like in those days you called them work prints and it's all very complicated and outdated. So there it sat in the vault. And then I think, you know, you and your, and your gathered guests talking this evening talked about the sort of dip in boxing interest that happened I would say, what would you say? The, the beginning of 2000. Until about 2010, I would say. Yeah, so there was a long period people weren't even talking about boxing. Yeah. And so boxing really, you know, there was the extreme sports and there was, you know, the WW3 or 4 or whatever they are. On the, but nobody, people were not talking about boxing. Mm -hmm. And then this year I noticed that... Um, First of all, there's three films that are coming out this year on boxing, narrative feature films. So Paul just came out. Um, two more are being released this year. In America, NBC has their Saturday Night Boxing, which is huge. HBO and Showtime are both doing it. Other networks are doing it. Um, the Garden is bringing back boxing. There's, of course, the big heavyweight fight that now Tom Loeffler has his fighter in um, in October, which is a huge thing. Um, so... So boxing is in the what do you call it in the air? You in know the air. that it's, kind it's in the, in the it's abundant at the moment. 
Yeah, people are talking about it. People are, and so we thought, okay, this is an interesting time to to bring it back. Um, and now that there's the digital platform, when we transfer all this, we can do it digitally. So we're no longer touching this stuff. It goes through the lab, but unfortunately, it's still a very expensive process. So that's why we we went on to the Kickstarter to hopefully raise this money to to get the film done. Okay. So if you so so the kick funder is, is Kickstarter, sorry, is what you'll be using to help fund yeah. the program to get the film. So right. uh, what's the response been so far within the boxing community? Well, the boxing community, I think, is really excited by it. it, it I mean, we've been on Twitter only a few weeks now, and it's pretty amazing how people are talking about the film. Uh, Evander Holofield's retweeting us. He's following us now. Shane Mosley is. We have fighters. We have writers like yourself and people who are, you know, in, in this world. And I think it's like a couple of things. One is that, you know, to talk about a film that's been in the vault for 20 years is very interesting. You know, what's in this footage and, and who will we see that we haven't seen for a long time as well as a window in like a time capsule. And then the other thing is that that we we're people are talking about boxing so kickstarter as a crowd funding source it's the way that people can pledge to a film they get rewards if they, they pledge and we have rewards from five dollars to 25 50 dollars and then go all the way up to five thousand excuse me but they go all the way up to five thousand dollars or more and it, at these rewards, you get different things. You get boxing gear, you get Gleason's gym t-shirts, you get autographed photographs of Dawn of the Dead in the old days when I did that. I mean, there's all sorts of wonderful things. Um, great photography, boxing photography, limited edition. Um, wonder, so, so everybody has a reward tier. I will say, honestly, that Kickstarter is a very, very difficult um, way to fund boxing. I've never seen a boxing film really get all their goal on Kickstarter. And, I, and I'm not quite sure why. Maybe it's boxing fans are not as familiar with Kickstarter or um, Kickstarter doesn't go out to boxing fans as much. Uh, we're doing better than I've seen any boxing film do. But we still have a long way to go, and so we only have like 10 days or a few days, and, and if we don't get all the goal, we get nothing with Kickstarter. This wow. is the problem. So wow. I know, I know. And we've worked so hard, and so many people like yourself and other writers have been talking about the film, and um, we're not going to give up. You know, So we're going to go to the very last hour for Kickstarter, and if we get it, we're great. And if we don't get it, you know, the conversation about title shot isn't over. People are talking about it. So I have a feeling somehow we're going to get this film finished. Well, let's let's hope that this interview with Bayloric TV makes the I, Kickstarter kick things forward. Kickstarter! <laughs> <laughs> so if they go on Kickstarter, they have to go Kickstarter is the website. Yes. And then go title shot. And then you'll see the film. And there's a great pictures, and some great videos. Some. Of course, and how do people follow you on Twitter so they can retweet the stuff that you do? Oh, I'm so bad about Twitter. Um, you, I think you do title shot. I think that's it. Title at, shot film? At title shot film. Yeah, is that what I do? I think it is. I think it is the one. <laughs> I think so. Galen Ross at title shot film. I mean, you'll find me. Title shot film. That's it. Do you have and anything then on, can, on YouTube oh, oh, or Facebook or Twitter about it? Other than Twitter, Facebook, Facebook or YouTube? Yeah, we have, let's see, Facebook has Title Shot. Right. And, and there's a page that you can like for Title Shot. Kickstarter is Title Shot. Um, Twitter is Title Shot Film, I think, right? I think Excellent. that is. Fantastic. <laughs> Great. Galen, thank you so much for talking to Bayloric TV. Uh, we thank wish you, you the very best. We will use our network definitely to get all those boxing fans in and those people who love a good movie and uh, get the support for it. So where is uh, uh, Godfrey at the moment, by the way? Ah, that's the other thing we want to do, which is really exciting, you know, is that 
getting this footage out of the vault is one step. And the other part is, where are these fighters after 20 years? So Godfrey is now, um, it turns out, he went back to Uganda, and he's a regional mayor of, of the Ugandan capital, Kampala, which is sort of like, I think, like the Bronx or the Brooklyn borough president. So he's doing that, which is, there are only five regional mayors, so this is a big deal. And I think he's also part of the Boxing Commission, which has been trying to get Ugandan fighters back into the Olympics, because I don't think that they were there this last time. Right. And so there's been that kind of controversy inside of um, Uganda about the Boxing Commission. And then, of course, we have, you know, where is Shane Mosley? Well, we all know that Shane is back back in the ring. So it's very interesting to see where these people are now and uh, that's part of the story. Again, thank you Galen for talking to Bayloric TV. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My father currently trains him. He's a junior middleweight contender. Ladies and gentlemen, Godfrey Niakana. He wants to fight. There's nothing else he wants to do but to fight. That's his life and that's it.